Hello! Today I'm bringing you my January wrap up. Um, basically, I didn't have a great reading month, but alas, anyway. So, the first book is Laurie Moore's Self Help. This is a book of short stories, and I actually kind of read it. It was sort of a gradual process. I was reading it for um, about a month, um, a story here and there. I have been trying for ages to get into short stories. Um, if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that I sort of dabble um, because I find them quite difficult and kind of over my head, I feel, a lot of the time. Uh, but I do write short stories and they are predominantly what I'm focusing on writing this year. So I thought I really needed to get into them. And Laurie Moore is the best short story writer I have um, picked up. She, this I think is her first collection or one of her very early collections. And um, it's, there's stuff in there that you can see she needs to develop. But generally it's really good, really insightful stories. There's one in here how to become a writer. If you're a writer, I would really, really recommend it. It's amazing. I've read it three times already. Um, and yeah, they're really good. Compared to a lot of short stories I've read, I really was touched by these. And I think in terms of writing, she's probably the short story writer that I found that is most like my own style. Um, but I enjoyed this. There was a few stories that fell a bit flat with me. A lot of the time I find the short stories the end, I found quite a challenge. But I think that's because I read them like a novel and they're a very different experience and a very open experience. Um, they sort of leave a lot to the imagination, which I struggle with. But I'm getting there with them and I really did enjoy that compared to a lot of others I've read. Then I read Jack Kerouac's On the Road. This was a reread for me. I read this when I was about 17 and loved it. Like, I got completely obsessed with Jack Kerouac for quite a few years. Just everything, oh, I just devoured him. And this time round, I didn't love it as much. I think it was just a different time in my life. It's basically a sort of, it's it's a fictionalised account, but in it's basically just a story of his travels and it's kind of mainly a love story to a character he meets who in the book is called Dean Moriarty and in real life is called Neil Cassidy who was sort of a real person who Jack Kerouac met and was a real influence on Jack Kerouac's work and it's basically a love letter to him it's about how he inspired Jack Kerouac to go travelling and basically go on a road trip around America. I think there is a romanticised view that this story is about a road trip straight across America because Jack Kerouac does talk about sort of tracing a line all the way through America that he wanted to travel, but it's not like that particularly. It's kind of over the course of a few years, the sort of travels he takes now and again, rather than one long travel. Um, um, but it's interesting it's good if you like really plot based novels this is obviously not for you because not a great deal happens um i really enjoyed the last hundred pages on this reread and i think the reason for that is that i read them in quite quick succession i mean when i was 17 and i read it i found it quite difficult to get into but once i was into it i read it in about a day and i mean it's not huge and um i think that probably helped i think it's a novel that needs to be read quite quickly because it's very fast paced and it's very quick and like Dean Moriarty is crazy and like whirls around and is mad um and I think it needs to be read like that to really appreciate it and after that I wanted an easier read so I picked up City of Ashes blah City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare this is the second in the Mortal Instruments series these books are weird like every part of me wants not to like them I mean I have issues at the moment with um, young adult books anyway I just kind of am a bit over them I feel as though people kind of hype them up so much and it's like but there's so, there's so many other books in the world but I mean this being the typical young adult book and yet I enjoyed it I I can't deny that it was fun um, basically for those of you who don't know the model instruments is basically it's set in a city where well a world where there's vampires and werewolves and things and there's these people called shadow hunters who hunt demons the main character clary um doesn't know about this world then discovers it blah 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 blah, blah. um obviously i can't really go into the plot of this book without giving away the plot of the first book but you know most people have read this by now um i enjoyed it it was a really fast paced read i mean it's not the thinnest book and they only get thicker from here on out but it was fast fun and just a holiday read I'd say um it's it's not got a huge literary merit, merit or anything like that but sometimes you just need a read like this just to ease yourself um one thing I would say that really bothered me and I, I don't want to spoil anything 
but for those of you who have read the first book, something happens at the end that means that something can't can't really happen. Um, I don't know if that's going to make any sense to anyone. And it kind of carries on in this book, and it's like, no. Then I read Carson McCullough's The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. I have done a review of this. Um, this is probably going to be up before that review because January up and it's now February, so I've got to get this video out today, really. So I will link the review down below when I put it up. I loved this, in short. It is amazing. It's gorgeous. And for those of you who like Richard Yates's, um Revolutionary Road, for example, it's perfect. Very much follows along the theme of everything is hopeless and life is shit. So if, if you know, you are a positive kind of person and like positive books, this isn't for you. But I quite like a bit of a miserable book, so it, it totally floated my boat. Basically, in short, I won't say much, but this is about a... It's, it centres around the life of a mute. He is deaf and obviously can't... Like, no one knows how to read sign language, so he is pretty much in his own head all the time. And it's about four people, predominantly, who centre themselves around him and sort of make him into a godlike figure without knowing him at all because he has no way to interact with them really and it's just really interesting and follows some really fascinating themes and it's amazingly written and I would recommend, I would really recommend. Then I read a non-fiction read which is rare for me, this is The Men Who Stare at Goats by John Runce. This is a film which I did watch years ago, can't remember much about so I'm going to re-watch re re that. But in terms of reading, this was funny. The sad thing, and I think, I suppose the trouble with non-fiction, is that because this was released, I believe, in 2004, or at least it was based at that time, and I felt like, because it's non-fiction, it, it's about current events, and it had a lot about the Iraq war and stuff like that, it kind of was outdated, and a lot of the stuff wasn't relevant anymore. So that was a shame, but it was still a really funny read. It's basically about John Ronson's sort of foray into the world of the CIA and the military and things like this and he discovers a weird faction of the military that focuses on like mind control and one of their tricks is to kill a goat, kill a goat just by staring at it or stop his heart. Um, and it's, it's fascinating, it's weird that this is real and yeah I enjoyed it all the more for it but it is slightly outdated I would say sadly. Then, the final book I read was Somerset Mourns, W Somerset Mourns, The Painted Veil. This is my first W Somerset Mourn and I will definitely be reading more of him. I finished this last night so it's quite fresh in my mind. It's really short so it didn't take me long. Basically this is about a woman called Kitty who is married into a, quite an unhappy marriage. I mean it's not miserable, he, her husband dotes on her but she doesn't love him. She kind of married him because her sister was getting married, her sister's younger than her. So she felt like she had to rush into things and um, she's regretted it ever since basically. She then embarked on an affair with a man who she falls madly in love with and her husband finds out and in the end her husband takes her to a colony where there is an outbreak of cholera because he wants to punish her I suppose and it's kind of, it's interesting. She ends up going on quite a spiritual revelation and realising a lot of stuff about herself. The only thing I would say about this, I was absolutely loving it until about halfway through and then I realised that there wasn't much going on other than that initial outline. That is pretty much all the plot there is. But it's still really enjoyable, really well written and I definitely want to for, sort of get get more into him. Um, it's It was strangely written a bit like a story, you know how I said that short stories sort of leave me feeling like I've missed something or that there should be something more. I almost felt like that with this, it's just an extended short story. It's it's about an incident in this person's life and how she deals with it, which you could say about every book, but normally there's a bit more plot plot to a story. This is not plot based, I would say, and it, it has a lot of literary merit, but not much happens and it ends up being a bit like, meh, meh. So um, it'll be interesting to read a few more of his books and sort of to see if that happens with all of them. I don't know if it was just me, I don't know if I was just expecting a lot, but it was slightly, it fell slightly flat with me. But I still loved it and I really liked the writing, so definitely going to be reading more of him. Bye!